How's it going YouTube? This is Grant with Retro Games and More coming at you with a new series that I'm going to be having on my channel called uh, Quick Computer Tips. Uh, I'm a computer technician. I've been working on computers for probably about 12 years now. I actually run my own shop. Um, and uh, I, I wanted to go over one issue uh, that uh, actually has, uh, you know, a lot of people probably have experienced this issue and didn't know exactly what it was and uh, they took their computer in for repair and uh, and the technician uh, either said oh, well your motherboard's bad uh, you know it needs to be replaced so forth and so on and uh, and, and in a lot of cases um, that's not true a lot of technicians uh, do know about this uh, is uh, when electrolytic capacitors swell and uh, and the, the caps of them expand and um, it causes a lot of weird issues with computers and I'll show you in a little bit exactly what it looks like and and what to look for and how to how to determine if uh, if you have this or not with your computer electrolytic capacitors uh, when they swell they can cause a lot of different types of issues with computers they can make or your computer doesn't turn on or it turns on and sporadically or it shuts off sporadically when you're in the middle of work or you might have video issues and nothing's wrong with your your monitor you're just getting weird signals on your monitor and uh, it could uh, attribute to memory errors uh, in your computer it can uh, attribute to specific blue screen deaths that you get with uh, with windows um, and uh, swollen capacitors aren't limited just to PCs uh, you know generally I see them more on on desktop PCs uh, on the motherboards uh, more than anything but I've seen them on uh, graphic cards they've been on uh, PCI Express uh, GPUs and AGP PCI um, I've seen it uh, within power supplies of desktop PCs I've seen it in some uh, early model laptops as well um, uh, it can happen to radios anything that uses uses uh, capacitors electrolytic capacitors uh, you know can have this issue and and the issue is really attributed to um, a bad batch um, and uh, you know, generally speaking, I mean, I'm, I know that it could be a case of, of bad capacitors that are shipped out. But as, but you know, in my experience, I've seen I've seen it happen more often to computers that aren't uh, cleaned out regularly. You know, with an air compressor, an air can, uh, keep the fans lubricated. Uh, it, I really tend to see the swollen capacitor issue more on computers that aren't you know regularly maintenance they're taken care of so uh, you know something to keep in mind as well but, uh, but yeah I want to show you exactly what a swollen capacitor is uh, and how to look for it and uh, and even how to replace one so alright uh, so basically I'm going to show you a swollen capacitor and uh, and I'll give you some close-ups you know like high-definition pictures so you can get a full detail because I know it's not going to come out very clear on this camera but basically if you can see this capacitor right here, and these are these are basically what capacitors look like, just little bitty cylinders. Now they range in size and and frequencies, um, but this is a good capacitor. You see, look at the top of that, how it is flat and it is not beveled or bubbled up. That's a good capacitor, and actually I replaced uh, I replaced capacitors easily three to four times a month on, on different components but yeah and what happens sometimes uh, the actual capacitors they they get to the point where they explode and uh, what's called an electrolyte uh, electrolyte fluid comes out and you'll see bubbling fluid come out of it or it's dried up and uh, and that's that was the that's the issue with these uh, these capacitors is that it's a bad formula um, and I know if, uh, say that you do have this issue and you brought it to a computer technician, generally uh, computer technicians will charge you a lot in labor to replace electrolytic capacitors. I mean, I generally, and, and I have a, a good price, generally charge anywhere between 30 to $60 of replacement, depending on how many are bad, how many need to be replaced, plus the, the parts. And I mean, capacitors can range anywhere from five, five cent, you know, a piece to a dollar. I mean, this really depends on where you get them. Um, capacitor, I mean, 
if if you wanted to go the route and replace it yourself, it's not extremely difficult, and it would save you save you some money. But uh, but yeah, the first step is to identifying that you have a capacitor issue. Uh, sometimes uh, you can have computer issues uh, because you have swollen capacitors inside of your PC's power supply. And in that case, you know what? You're you're better off buying a new power supply because the it's uh, so tedious to have to take these apart. Uh, you have to, you know, sometimes the capacitors are really uh, mounted and grained in between different components and transistors and uh, so forth, and, and they're really hard to get to. And uh, replacing capacitors on, on power supplies are not very easy to do. And you definitely would be better off just purchasing a, a new power supply. Uh, but that is an extremely, extremely common issue as well. The, uh, the second most common place that I see swollen capacitors is within uh, desktop PC power supplies. And uh, speaking of power supplies, even laptop power supplies, you know, the bricks on laptops, they can have solar capacitors as well and make it where you, it, your laptop doesn't charge. So, I mean, they, it, it can really cause a lot of different issues. And, uh, and this one thing about technology and, and computer repair, I mean, you know, when a technician tells you that uh, uh, one problem can be stemmed from, you know, a hundred different uh, issues creating that problem, uh, it, it's true. You know, it really, you know, one issue or one, one, uh, one malfunction really could be due to so many different types of, uh, of issues causing it. So, uh, but yeah, so I want to show you kind of how to replace a capacitor. Uh, it's not very difficult. Uh, there's a few different ways that you can do it. So, uh, yeah, I'll show you how to do that. And uh, excuse the audio issues on re me recording, replacing the capacitor. I don't have my nice mic uh, over at my soldering station, so uh, I'll be relying on the camera's microphone. So.